What's up everyone, Alex here. Sakura Wars fans, do I have a treat for you. I was fortunate enough to be given the opportunity to interview Sakura Wars director Tetsuya Otsubo and producer Tetsu Katano via email, so I gathered some of your questions from YouTube, Twitter, and Reddit and sent it over to them to answer. I will warn you that there's one question here that can be considered as a spoiler for the latest game, so I'll be giving you a warning both in audio and on screen so you can mute the sound for that section if you haven't finished the game yet. Reading both these questions and answers myself would sound kinda silly though, so I reached out to my good friend Eurothug4000 here on YouTube to read these questions for me. She makes great introspective videos on some of my favorite games, such as Animal Crossing and Death Stranding. I highly recommend checking out her channel if you like deep dives into the games we play. Thanks for helping me out, Maria. Thanks, Alex. Glad to be here. Now let's get right into the questions. What was the reason why Sakura Wars was turned into an action game? In light of today's PS4 gaming scene, we thought that an action-based game style would be less of an entry barrier and potentially more inviting to new users than when centered around strategy RPG battles. The older games made very light use of 3D. What was the biggest challenge to moving to a fully 3D rendered game? One of the biggest challenges we found with the transition to full 3D was that it brought many more details to the user's attention. It was a particular challenge to maintain that level of quality in the story event scenes, because now that the characters were 3D models, we had to make sure we were bringing them to life with believable performances and facial expressions. What were some of the influences from the previous games that you wanted to keep for the newest iteration? The Sakura War series traditionally takes its structure from 90s anime TV shows, so we wanted to preserve iconic elements like the next episode previews or the bumpers you see in between commercial breaks. We also wanted to keep mechanics like the time-limited dialogue mechanic called Lips, a game system that's always been a major part of the Sakura Wars franchise. There's been an unprecedented amount of freedom in video games in the West that allows players to have love interests of different genders. Since there are a good number of female Sakura Wars fans out there, some of them were wondering if there would ever be an opportunity to introduce love interests of different genders in the future. Indeed, there's been a lot of discussion in the industry about greater degrees of freedom. In the Sakura Wars series, we don't consider the romantic elements to be the main feature of the games, but rather a means to express the characters and the story. That said, if we found compelling and convincing reasons to expand the scope in future works, I think it's certainly possible. We've been getting a lot of really good cosmetic DLC for the game, but I'm curious if there was ever a conversation about making story DLC. For a variety of reasons, this hasn't come to fruition, but there was a time when we were considering additional story DLC. What have you learned from the reception of this game that you feel might help the development and marketing of the next game? We know that the love of our player base runs deep, but this experience reconfirmed it. All of us on the development team pledged to strengthen our own love for Sakura Wars as we move forward. How did the idea of signing on guest artists come about? How did you choose which ones to sign on? How was Tite Kubo selected as the main artist? I hope I pronounced that right, by the way. For the old titles, character design was entirely handled by Kosuke Fujishima, but in today's Japanese video game scene, it's becoming more common for a variety of artists to collaborate on a game, so we plan to bring in guest artists right from the start of the project. As for our artist selection process, we developed our character groupings and backstories first, then reached out to artists who matched the direction of each grouping. We chose Tite Kubo as our main character designer because of his work on Bleach, serialized in Weekly Shonen Jump, which was popular not just in Japan but around the world. He is very experienced in character design, and the concept for the main heroine, Sakura Amamiya, a swordswoman in traditional Japanese garb, fit very well with Kubo's style. What was the most fun part about designing the new characters in this new generation? What were their inspirations? The part I enjoyed the most was when each of the artists sent in their character design sketches. Before we had them start working on the actual designs, we sent them the detailed character backgrounds and told each artist what we wanted them to focus on in terms of personality, life history, and appearance. Some artists also came back to us with additional character design suggestions. It was a lot of fun figuring out how to incorporate these suggestions into the official character backgrounds while still maintaining consistency. 
What inspired Peanut? We wanted to create a mascot for the Imperial Theater. We came up with this Japanese name, Gekizo, by combining the word theater, Geki, and elephant, Zo. But after that, we left the design details entirely up to Mr. Sugimori. He understood the two major motifs right away, Imperial Theater plus elephant, and so the very first concept he submitted was almost the exact same as what you see in the final game. There's a lot of longtime fans of Kosuke Fujishima's work on the previous games who wanted me to ask this. Is it possible to bring him back even if it's only for a guest artist role in the future? Kosuke Fujimori holds a very special position in the history of the Sakura Wars series. We as the development team feel nothing but respect for him. I'm going to break character for a moment here and mention that Maria is going to be asking me the question with spoilers. If you haven't finished the game yet, please mute the audio and unmute when the spoiler label disappears on screen. Back to you, Maria. How did the decision to send the original cast to the Shadow Realm come about? When writing the story, do you get inspired by events in real life? One of the core concepts of the new Sakura Wars game was that the story would be centered around Seijiro Kamiyama and the other new characters. But even so, we couldn't forget about Ichiro Ogami and all the other characters from the past games. We pondered for a bit on what could have happened during the 10 year gap in the story between the last game and the new one, especially since it would require Kamiyama and the other new characters to be the ones fighting for Tokyo. Eventually, we came up with the idea that Ogami and the other characters had their own important battles to fight, leading us to the present we see in the new game. Would you consider a potential sequel or spin-off based on where the anime left off? We can't confirm anything right now one way or the other, but if there is enough fan demand, anything is possible. Some fans would like to know your feelings about Kohei Tanaka's importance to the series as a music composer. It's a rare thing for a single composer to have composed 100% of the music of an entire series. Also, bonus question, are you a One Piece fan? We can't imagine anyone else but Kohei Tanaka handling the music of Sakura Wars, which is why we considered him an invaluable contributor to the series. He's written a whole new soundtrack for the game too, with loads of irresistible melodies glowing with Kohei-san's love for Sakura Wars, so we hope you listen closely and enjoy. And as for One Piece, you bet, we're huge fans. We are! Why did the soundtrack feel nostalgic? That's the magic of Kohei Tanaka. The soundtrack has many themes with a nostalgic quality, and we suggest you listen to the past title's music to compare if you're able to. Would you consider spinning off Sakura Wars into different genres? Like perhaps revisiting the original strategy gameplay, or maybe developing a Musou-style game? Sakura Wars as a series is known for branching off into various spin-offs, so there are indeed many possibilities we can contemplate. I've spoken with hundreds of fans who have played the new Sakura Wars for the first time, and are just now discovering that it's got a long legacy of games that never made it to the West. I'm sure I know the answer to this question already, but they, along with other fans, would really like to know if we'll be seeing the original games localized, and if not, they want you to know that they'd buy it. Speaking personally, I would love for the past titles to reach as many fans as possible. Just like how the recent PS4 title was made possible due to an outpouring of fan support, with enough demand, there could be an option for presenting the old titles in some form. We definitely want to hear your thoughts. A huge number of fans wanted to ask this question. What's the likelihood of this game or future Sakura Wars games coming to other platforms? PC and Switch were on the top of the list. We are aware that there is demand, and the development team is giving it a lot of thought. Do you have anything you'd like to say to the fans of the game, old and new? First of all, we're overjoyed that the game has reached the West. We'd like the legend of Sakura Wars to spread further and further, so it would be an honor if you could spread the word about what makes the game special to you. And that's the interview! I hope the developers answered as many of the questions you all ask as possible. I want to thank Zach Reese from SEGA for all his work to turn this interview into a reality, as well as Tetsuya Otsubo and Tetsu Katano for a glimpse into the series that we all love so much. And of course, I want to thank Eurothug4000 for helping me with this interview. Links to everything we talked about today are available down in the description of this video. Thanks for watching everyone, and see you online.